Hello and welcome back to our virtual classroom and another lesson in our trades training video series. I'm Joe Carswell and this session is all about fire safety and hazards on a construction site. As usual, we're going to follow along with a presentation from Teach Construction, so let's get right into it. To start this conversation, I'd like to say that construction sites have fire risks that don't usually exist in normal buildings or finished buildings. We're working on these buildings, they're not complete, and there's a lot of systems that are in place when a building's finished that are not yet put in to a building under construction. The other thing is that there's a lot of materials that are going to be stored and staged on that site that once the building's done, that condition doesn't exist. There's also a lot of people coming and going, a lot of trades that are doing dangerous things that can lead to fire. For us to understand fire risks on a job site, we need to first understand what causes fire. There's going to be three main elements that's going to lead to fire, and that's going to be oxygen, a source of fuel, and a source of heat. These three things combined will cause a fire. Starting with oxygen, we've all tried to light a fire, so we understand that if you stoke a fire or if you blow on it, the more air or oxygen that it receives, the faster and hotter that it will burn. If we look at that residential structure that we started this presentation with, you will see that this is basically a bonfire ready to happen. There's a lot of airflow through this building. We cannot control that. So if this was to catch on fire, it would burn very quickly. Next up is our fuel. There's a couple different types of fuel to talk about. It's our combustibles and our flammables. These are fancy words for combustibles will be materials that will burn once the fire starts and flammables are the ones that will start very quickly burning. A closer look at combustible solids on a work site will look like this. It could be anything from material packaging to sawdust or plastic dust that's produced from cutting materials to actually the cutoffs or scraps that we're producing, the waste that is created when we're building. Here you see some combustible liquids. Paint is notorious for being flammable. Other things like antifreeze that would be in vehicles or any sprays or aerosols could be considered combustible liquids. Here's a very common example of a flammable solid. Coffee creamer will ignite very quickly and is very common in any household. So make sure that you understand the risk of any items that are on the job site. Flammable liquids, this would be any gasoline or fuel, diesel, kerosene, any alcohol-based products, even solvents like mineral spirits, acetone, naphtha. These are very common, especially in the finished stages of the building, say for a painter. Even propane is considered a flammable liquid. All of these should be considered hazardous and can create a, very quickly a fire. Our on-site materials need to be organized and treated properly. Good housekeeping is a big deal, not only for slip, trip, and fall hazard prevention, but also for fire hazards. So we need to have a roll off on site that we're using. We need to clean up and keep organized all throughout the day. Never leave a job site messy. It could turn into a bonfire. Also, any materials that are delivered and stored need to be considered as hazardous until they're actually installed. A source of heat is our third thing we need for the fire. That can be anything from a plumber's torch or any welding that's happening on site to sparks from tools that are making contact with metal. That's all it takes. It could be an electrical short that's happening on the job site from overloading a circuit or a failure in that circuit. It could be as simple as a cigarette that was smoked and thrown into a place that then causes a fire. Here you see an example of bad housekeeping and job site clutter and waste can literally turn this into not only a hard place to exit from, but also can encourage that fire to start and spread and move very quickly. These are all combustible materials that you see here and the way they're piled up, it would be very bad for a fire to start here. So even things like rags that have solvents on them that are put in a trash can are famous for starting fires. We're using a lot of battery operated tools on a job site and charging batteries can also be a job site hazard. Lithium ion batteries are also very famous 
for causing fires if they fail in their charging process. So if you have batteries that aren't working quite right or never leave a charging battery in a building unattended, electrical circuits can heat up if they're overused and cause a fire. Any failure in that circuit leads to heat, which then can cause a spark arcing and then start the entire process of a fire. Make sure you're not overloading circuit, you're spreading your loads out, and that all your tools and cords are in good condition. Now that we've talked about the elements of a fire and certain fire hazards on the job, let's talk about what to do about it. And we're gonna start with knowing about a fire extinguisher and knowing where to locate them. To begin with, let's say that fire extinguishers by law need to be well marked, well placed, especially in a commercial building, and they should be convenient to us at the moment we need to use them. So here I have several fire extinguishers and you see a universal symbol for fire extinguishers on the presentation. Let's go over the parts of a fire extinguisher, the common parts. Most will have a nozzle, a discharge hose, you're going to see a pressure gauge on a lot of fire extinguishers. There will be a safety pin that you have to pull before you can use it. You're going to see a squeeze handle. This is going to release the contents of the fire extinguisher. You're going to see an instruction label that will give you good information on how to use and where to use this fire extinguisher. And there will always be a pressure canister that will hold the contents that will treat the fire. Here we see the gauge. This is a close up of the gauge. As you see on the presentation, there's a green region and there's a needle. So the needle needs to be in the green region. That's telling us that this fire extinguisher is charged properly and ready to go. By law, fire extinguishers need to be inspected yearly. The inspection tag should be on the fire extinguisher and it should be up to date. So look for that date. There are different classes and types of fire extinguishers. A, B, and C, these are going to allow us to use these fire extinguishers on fires that are created by different materials burning. As you can see here, class A is going to be wood, paper, textiles, things like that. A class B fire extinguisher is going to work on flammable liquids. And a class C is good for electrical equipment that has caused a fire. Some extinguishers like this one are going to work on several different types of fires. This one is an A, B and a C class. That means it will work for all of these different fire hazards. There is a simple acronym to remember when we're talking about using a fire extinguisher. A lot of people have never operated a fire extinguisher, but you can remember this simple four letter word pass to help you remember how to use it. So the P is going to stand for pulling the safety pin. This fire extinguisher will not work until that safety pin is pulled. That's there to keep it from being used accidentally. The second thing you're going to do A is aim the nozzle at the base of the fire. What you're not trying to do with this fire extinguisher is to be a hero and be a firefighter. You're just trying to eliminate enough fire to get out of the building. A fire extinguisher does not have a lot of ingredients in it, so it needs to be used sparingly and used with a good strategy. And that's going to have to do with your aim and just making a path to get out. S is for squeeze the handle. As you squeeze this handle, it's going to allow the ingredients inside to come out of the nozzle and treat the fire. You're going to sweep that nozzle back and forth at the base of the fire, and this is going to eliminate the oxygen to the fire, which will help it extinguish. Along with identifying our fire extinguisher locations, we need to know our fire exits. This is a good thing to do when you first arrive on the job site. Lock it into your head. It might be that you need to know this at a time when you cannot see anymore because there's too much smoke in the building. They should be well lit, your fire exits, and they should be free and open paths out of the building. As workers on a building doing construction, it's very important that we never block fire exits. Here we see an example of a fire exit that has been neglected. And this needs to be a solid path out of this building. It might be several people that need to leave all at the same time. So this is an unacceptable and illegal situation. Here we see another one. This might be a temporary loadout on a job site. Still no good. Even if it's for a second, this cannot happen. 
Here we see one that's been blocked for a long time. This is total neglect and is a really bad situation. If someone needed to get out of this building in a hurry, it's possible that they would die on their way out. Let's do a fire safety review. Know the three elements that make a fire and be able to identify anything on the job site that relates to those and know what to do to prevent them from being a fire risk. Keep the work site clean and organized. Housekeeping is a big deal. This is a great way to minimize fire hazards. Know the locations, parts, and operation of all fire extinguishers and make sure they have their tags and they're up to date. Know the location and understand the importance of keeping fire exits unobstructed at all times. It's the law. This is a list of terms used in this presentation. And as always, I like to stress this idea of learning the language of building and using it on the job site, especially when we're talking about safety. So I hope you've learned something about fire hazards, what causes fire, what's on the job site that relates to those hazards, and things that we can do to protect ourselves and prevent fire. So thanks for watching. That's a wrap. This video is a production of Trade Skills U, all rights reserved.